The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them underfoot and turn and maul you. In everything do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow, and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's first reading, we have a wonderful example of prayer in the king of Judah, King Hezekiah. The context is he's being threatened by this pagan king, Sennacherib, of Assyria. Assyria has dominated the region. This is about the 8th century BC. And now they are threatening Judah itself. And this wicked king sends threatening letters to King Hezekiah of Judah, basically saying, surrender and let us dominate you. You pay us tribute and so forth. But King Hezekiah, who's one of the few good kings, descendant of King David, takes a different route. He takes the narrow path. He brings the threatening letters into the temple, lays them before God, and prays. We have the example of his prayer set out in today's first reading from 2 Kings chapter 19. And it's a beautiful prayer. It starts off by King Hezekiah acknowledging God's majesty, that God alone created the heavens and the earth. And then he makes his petition in great humility. He says, O Lord, see and hear the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to mock the living God. Save us, I pray, from his hand, so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you, O Lord, are God alone. This is very similar to other prayers in the Old Testament where people are in great danger. For example, Daniel, in chapter 2 of that book, is faced with a similar threat, this time from King Nebuchadnezzar, who has this terrifying dream, and he tells all of his wise men of the court that unless they're able to both tell him the details of the dream and interpret it, he will put them all to death. Daniel is one of those wise men in his court. He was a captive in the great Babylonian captivity, so he goes before the Lord, since he is a pious Jew. Then the Lord gives him the interpretation. And King Nebuchadnezzar is so impressed that he bows down to the God of Israel. It's also similar to the prayer that Queen Esther prays in the book of Esther chapter 4, where she is also faced with a dangerous situation. Haman has desired to completely dominate and destroy the Jews. Esther happens to be queen, and she is a Jew. She knows that she can't come before the king unless she's been summoned. She hasn't been summoned. And yet, she falls on her face before God to give her courage. She goes before the king, makes her plea, and saves the entire people. In today's prayer, in the first reading, notice what King Hezekiah does. He brings this matter before God and trusts in God to deliver him and God's people. God responds by sending the prophet Isaiah, saying to King Hezekiah, the God of Israel has heard your prayer about King Shennacherib. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning him. She despises you. She scorns you, virgin daughter of Zion. She tosses her head behind your back, daughter of Jerusalem. Prayer is answered because God goes into the camp of the Assyrians just before they're ready to attack and brings destruction on 185,000 of the Assyrian soldiers. They are dead, and the king has to withdraw back to Assyria. But this prayer really does answer Jesus' 
in today's gospel, Jesus says to his disciples, do not give what is holy to dogs and do not throw your pearls before swine or they will trample them underfoot and turn and maul you. Well, King Hezekiah had a choice. He could have capitulated, he could have surrendered, but then he would have been throwing the faith, probably the goods of the temple, the treasury, to this wicked king. And this wicked king probably would have introduced paganism into the Holy Land. And so he does not throw what is holy to dogs, and God protects him. The other thing Jesus says is to everyone, do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. Well, that's exactly what King Hezekiah did. Rather than surrender the whole people of Israel to this wicked king, he does for his people what he would want done to him. He brings the matter before God and trusts in God, and God responds. And then finally, Jesus says in today's gospel from Matthew chapter 7, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. It would have been easy, the easy path for King Hezekiah to simply surrender to a much powerful kingdom. He would have probably saved his life, but then he would have subjected his people to all kinds of idolatry. Rather, he enters the narrow gate. He goes into the temple and prays and trusts the Lord and risks everything on God's promises, and he is delivered. So it's a wonderful example for us to do likewise, not to throw our pearls, our faith, before swine, which would be a sinful life, to capitulate to whatever is going on in the culture or whatever temptations we're faced with, but rather to hold strong and enter the narrow way, and then to do to others as you would have them do to you, put it into practice. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Aloysius Gonzaga, he is one who exemplified what Jesus is teaching. He was born in 1568 in a rich family. In fact, he was a prince. His father wanted him to enter into this military career and assume all kinds of glory for the family and riches and status. But at an early age, he entered a narrow way. He began to pray. At the age of nine, he made a religious vow of celibacy and decided to enter the religious life. And he had all kinds of battles with his father who wanted differently. And even though he grew up in this very lax Renaissance Italy and its lavish lifestyle, he, being the eldest son, forsook the inheritance and entered the Jesuits. And at an age of early 20s, he wanted to enter the missionary field, but because a plague broke out in Rome, he offered to take care of the poor who were sick with this plague. And he did. He went into the hospitals. He cared for those who were dying. Unfortunately, he caught the plague and died at the age of 23, but of course he's a saint now in heaven. Notice what he did. He entered the narrow way and he prayed didn't throw his pearls before swine. He could have entered into this lavish lifestyle of a military career. And he did to others what he wanted done to him. He went into the hospital and cared for the sick and the poor. May we be challenged by this saint, and we ask for his prayers, that we would also give priority to prayer, enter the narrow way, and finally, the golden rule. Do to others as we would have them do unto us. God will answer our prayer. We will bear a fruitful life. And God willing, one day, join the angels and saints in worshiping God in the blessed life. Let us pray.